Welcome to the I Can't Sleep podcast, where I read random articles from across the web to bore you to sleep with my soothing voice. I'm your host, Benjamin Boster. Today's episode is from a Wikipedia article titled, Clothing. Clothing, also known as clothes, garments, dress, apparel, or attire, is an item worn on the body. Typically, clothing is made of fabrics or textiles, but over time it has included garments made from animal skin and other thin sheets of materials and natural products found in the environment put together. The wearing of clothing is mostly restricted to human beings and is a feature of all human societies. The amount and type of clothing worn depends on gender, body type, social factors, and geographic considerations. Garments cover the body, footwear covers the feet, gloves cover the hands, while hats and headgear cover the head. Clothing serves many purposes. It can serve as protection from the elements, rough surfaces, sharp stones, rash-causing plants and insect bites, by providing a barrier between the skin and the environment. Clothing can insulate against cold or hot conditions, and it can provide a hygienic barrier, keeping infectious and toxic materials away from the body. It can protect feet from injury and discomfort or facilitate navigation in varied environments. Clothing also provides protection from ultraviolet radiation. It may be used to prevent glare or increase visual acuity in harsh environments, such as brimmed hats. Clothing is used for protection against injury in specific tasks and occupations, sports, and warfare. Fashioned with pockets, belts, or loops, Clothing may provide a means to carry things while freeing the hands. Clothing has significant social factors as well. Wearing clothes is a variable social norm. Being deprived of clothing in front of others may be embarrassing. Some forms of personal protective equipment amount to clothing such as coveralls, chaps, or a doctor's white coat, with similar requirements for maintenance and cleaning as other textiles, boxing gloves function both as protective equipment and as a sparring weapon, so the equipment aspect rises above the glove aspect. More specialized forms of protective equipment, such as face shields, are classified as protective accessories. At the far extreme, self-enclosing diving suits or space suits are form-fitting body covers and amount to a form of dress without being clothing per se, while containing enough high technology to amount to more of a tool than a garment. This line will continue to blur as wearable technology embeds assistive devices directly into the fabric itself. Enabling innovations are ultra-low-power consumption and flexible electronic substrates. Clothing also hybridizes into a personal transportation system, ice skates, roller skates, cargo pants, other outdoor survival gear, one-man band, or concealment system, stage magicians hidden linings or pockets in tradecraft. A mode of dress fit to purpose, whether stylistic or functional, is known as an outfit or ensemble. Estimates of when humans began wearing clothes vary from 40,000 to as many as 3 million years ago. But recent studies suggest humans were wearing clothing at least 100,000 years ago. 
Recent studies by Ralph Kittler, Manfred Kayser, and Mark Stoneking, anthropologists at the Max Planck Institute of Evolutionary Anthropology, have attempted to constrain the most recent date of the introduction of clothing with an indirect method relying on lice. The rationale for this method of dating stems from the fact that the human body louse cannot live outside of clothing, dying after only a few hours without shelter. This strongly implies that the date of the body louse's speciation from its parent, Pediculus humanus, can have taken place no earlier than the earliest human adoption of clothing. This date at which the body louse diverged from both its parent species and its sibling subspecies, the head louse, can be determined by the number of mutations each has developed during the intervening time. Such mutations occur at a known rate, and the date of last common ancestor for two species can therefore be estimated from their frequency. These studies have produced dates from 40,000 to 170,000 years ago, with the greatest likelihood of speciation lying at about 107,000 years ago. Kittler, Kayser, and Stone King suggest that the invention of clothing may have coincided with the northward migration of modern Homo sapiens away from the warm climate of Africa which is thought to have begun between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago. A second group of researchers, also relying on the genetic clock, estimate that clothing originated between 30,000 and 114,000 years ago. Dating with direct archaeological evidence produces dates consistent with those of lice. In September 2021, scientists reported evidence of clothes being made 120,000 years ago, based on findings and deposits in Morocco. The development of clothing is deeply connected to human evolution, with early garments likely consisting of animal skins and natural fibers adapted for protection and social signaling. According to anthropologists and archaeologists, the earliest clothing likely consisted of fur, leather, leaves, or grass that was draped, wrapped, or tied around the body. Knowledge of such clothing remains inferential, as clothing materials deteriorate quickly compared with stone, bone, shell, and metal artifacts. Archaeologists have identified very early sewing needles of bone and ivory from about 30,000 BC, found near Kostengi, Russia, in 1988, and in 2016 a needle at least 50,000 years old from Denisova Cave in Siberia, made by Denisovans. Dyed flax fibers that date back to 34,000 BC and could have been used in clothing, have been found in a prehistoric cave in Georgia. Several distinct human cultures, including those residing in the Arctic Circle, have historically crafted their garments exclusively from treated and adorned animal furs and skins. In contrast, numerous other societies have complemented or substituted leather and skins with textiles woven, knitted, or twined from a diverse array of animal and plant fibers, such as wool, linen, cotton, silk, hemp, and ramey. Although modern consumers may take the production of clothing for granted, Making fabric by hand is a tedious and labor-intensive process, involving fiber-making, spinning, and weaving. The textile industry was the first to be mechanized, with the powered loom during the Industrial Revolution. Different cultures have evolved various ways of creating clothes out of cloth. One approach involves draping the cloth. 
Many people wore and still wear garments consisting of rectangles of cloth wrapped to fit. For example, the dhoti for men and the sari for women in the Indian subcontinent and the Scottish kilt. The clothes may be tied up, dhoti and sari, or implement pins or belts to hold the garments in place like a kilt. The cloth remains uncut and people of various sizes can wear the garment. Another approach involves measuring, cutting, and sewing the cloth by hand or with a sewing machine. Clothing can be cut from a sewing pattern and adjusted by a tailor to the wearer's measurements. An adjustable sewing mannequin or dress form is used to create form-fitting clothing. If the fabric is expensive, the tailor tries to use every bit of the cloth rectangle in constructing the clothing, perhaps cutting triangular pieces from one corner of the cloth and adding them elsewhere as gussets. Traditional European patterns for shirts and chemises take this approach. These remnants can also be reused to make patchwork pockets, hats, vests, and skirts. Modern European fashion treats cloth much less conservatively, typically cutting in such a way as to leave various odd-shaped cloth remnants. Industrial sewing operations sell these as waste. Domestic sewers may turn them into quilts. In the thousands of years that humans have been making clothing, they have created an astonishing array of styles, many of which have been reconstructed from surviving garments, photographs, paintings, mosaics, etc., as well as from written descriptions. Costume history can inspire current fashion designers as well as costumeers for plays, films, television, and historical reenactment. Comfort is related to various perceptions, physiology, social, and psychological needs. And after food, it is clothing that satisfies these comfort needs. Clothing provides aesthetic, tactile, thermal, moisture, and pressure comfort. Aesthetic comfort. Visual perception is influenced by color, fabric construction, style, garment fit, fashion compatibility, and finish of clothing material. Aesthetic comfort is necessary for psychological and social comfort. Thermoregulation and thermophysiological comfort. Thermophysiological comfort is the capacity of the clothing material that makes the balance of moisture and heat between the body and the environment. It is a property of textile materials that creates ease by maintaining moisture and thermal levels in a human's resting and active states. The selection of textile materials significantly affects the comfort of the wearer. Different textile fibers have unique properties that make them suitable for use in various environments. Natural fibers are breathable and absorb moisture, and synthetic fibers are hydrophobic. They repel moisture and do not allow air to pass. Different environments demand a diverse selection of clothing materials. Hence, the appropriate choice is important. The major determinants that influence thermophysiology comfort are permeable construction, heat, and moisture transfer rate. Thermal comfort. One primary criterion for our physiological needs is thermal comfort. The heat dissipation effectiveness of clothing gives the wearer a neither very hot nor very cold feel. 
The optimum temperature for thermal comfort of the skin surface is between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius, i.e. a neutral temperature. Thermophysiology reacts whenever the temperature falls below or exceeds the neutral point on either side. It is discomforting below 28 and above 30 degrees. Clothing maintains a thermal balance. It keeps the skin dry and cool. It helps to keep the body from overheating while avoiding heat from the environment. Moisture comfort. This is the prevention of a damp sensation. According to Holly's research, it feels uncomfortable when more than 50% to 65% of the body is wet. Tactile comfort. This is a resistance to the discomfort related to the friction created by clothing against the body. It is related to the smoothness, roughness, softness, and stiffness of the fabric used in clothing. The degree of tactile discomfort may vary between individuals, which is possible due to various factors including allergies, tickling, prickling, skin abrasion, coolness, and the fabric's weight, structure, and thickness. There are specific surface finishes, mechanical and chemical, that can enhance tactile comfort. Fleece sweatshirts and velvet clothing, for example. Soft, clingy, stiff, heavy, light, hard, sticky, scratchy prickly, and all terms used to describe tactile sensations. Pressure Comfort The comfort of the human body's pressure receptors' sensory response towards clothing. Fabric with lycra feels more comfortable because of this response and superior pressure comfort. The sensation response is influenced by the material's structure, snuggling, looseness, heavy, light, soft, or stiff structuring. The most obvious function of clothing is to protect the wearer from the elements. It serves to prevent wind damage and provides protection from sunburn. In the cold, it offers thermal insulation. Shelter can reduce the functional need for clothing. For example, coats, hats, gloves, and other outer layers are normally removed when entering a warm place. Similarly, clothing has seasonal and regional aspects, so the thinner materials and fewer layers of clothing generally are worn in warmer regions and seasons than in colder ones. Boots, hats, jackets, ponchos, and coats designed to protect from rain and snow are specialized clothing items. Clothing has been made from a wide variety of materials, ranging from leather and furs to woven fabrics to elaborate and exotic natural and synthetic fabrics. Not all body coverings are regarded as clothing. Articles carried rather than worn normally are considered accessories rather than clothing, such as handbags. Items worn on a single part of the body and easily removed, scarves. Worn purely for adornment, jewelry or items that do not serve a protective function. For instance, corrective eyeglasses, arctic goggles, and sunglasses would not be considered an accessory because of their protective functions. Clothing protects against many things that might injure or irritate the human body, including rain, snow, wind, and other weather, as well as from the sun. Garments that are too sheer, 
thin, small, or tight, offer less protection. Appropriate clothes can also reduce risk during activities, such as work or sport. Some clothing protects from specific hazards, such as insects, toxic chemicals, weather, weapons, and contact with abrasive substances. Humans have devised clothing solutions to environmental or other hazards, such as spacesuits, armor, diving suits, swimsuits, beekeeper gear, motorcycle leathers, high visibility clothing, and other pieces of protective clothing. The distinction between clothing and protective equipment is not always clear cut since clothes designed to be fashionable often have protective value, and clothes designed for function often have corporate fashion in their design. The choice of clothes also has social implications. They cover parts of the body that social norms require to be covered, act as a form of adornment, and serve other social purposes. Someone who lacks the means to procure appropriate clothing due to poverty or affordability, or lack of inclination, sometimes is said to be worn, ragged, or shabby. Clothing performs a range of social and cultural functions, such as individual, occupational, gender differentiation, and social status. In many societies, norms about clothing reflect standards of modesty, religion, gender, and social status. Clothing may also function as adornment and an expression of personal taste or style. Serious books on clothing and its functions appear from the 19th century as European colonial powers interacted with new environments, such as tropical ones in Asia. Some scientific research into the multiple functions of clothing in the first half of the 20th century, the publications such as J.C. Flugel's Psychology of Clothes in 1930, and Newberg's seminal Physiology of Heat Regulation and the Science of Clothing in 1949. By 1968, the field of environmental physiology had advanced and expanded significantly, but the science of clothing in relation to environmental physiology had changed little. There has since been considerable research, and the knowledge base has grown significantly, but the main concepts remain unchanged, and indeed, Newberg's book continues to be cited by contemporary authors, including those attempting to develop thermoregularity models of clothing development. Clothing reveals much about human history. According to Professor Kiki Smith of Smith College, garments preserved in collections are resources for study similar to books and paintings. Scholars around the world have studied a wide range of clothing topics, including the history of specific items of clothing. Clothing styles in different cultural groups and the business of clothing and fashion. The textile curator Linda Baumgarten writes that clothing provides a remarkable picture of the daily lives, beliefs, expectations, and hopes of those who lived in the past. Clothing presents a number of challenges to historians. Clothing made of textiles or skins is subject to decay and the erosion of physical integrity may be seen as a loss of cultural information. Costume collections often focus on important pieces of clothing considered unique or otherwise significant, limiting the opportunities scholars have to study everyday clothing. 
Clothing has long served as a marker of social status, gender, and cultural identity, reflecting broader societal structures and values. During the early modern period, individuals utilized their attire as a significant method of conveying and asserting their social status. Individuals employed the utilization of high-quality fabrics and trendy designs as a means of communicating their wealth and social standing, as well as an indication of their knowledge and understanding of current fashion trends to the general public. As a result, clothing played a significant role in making the social hierarchy perceptible to all members of society. In some societies, clothing may be used to indicate rank or status. In ancient Rome, for example, only senators could wear garments dyed with Tyrian purple. In traditional Hawaiian society, only high-ranking chiefs could wear feather cloaks and paloa, or carved whale teeth. In China, before establishment of the Republic, only the emperor could wear yellow. History provides many examples of elaborate sumptuary laws that regulated what people could wear. In societies without such laws, which includes most modern societies, Social status is signaled by the purchase of rare or luxury items that are limited by cost to those with wealth or status. In addition, peer pressure influences clothing choice. Some religious clothing might be considered a special case of occupational clothing. Sometimes it is worn only during the performance of religious ceremonies. However, it may be worn every day as a marker for special religious status. Sikhs wear a turban as it is a part of their religion. In some religions, such as Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism, and Jainism, the cleanliness of religious dresses is of paramount importance and considered to indicate purity. Jewish ritual requires rending, tearing of one's upper garment as a sign of mourning. The Quran says about husbands and wives regarding clothing, they are clothing covering for you, and you for them. Christian clergy members wear religious vestments during liturgical services, and may wear specific non-liturgical clothing at other times. Clothing appears in numerous contexts in the Bible. The most prominent passages are the story of Adam and Eve who made coverings for themselves out of fig leaves, Joseph's coat of many colors, and the clothing of Judah and Tamar, Mordecai and Esther. Furthermore, the priests officiating in the temple in Jerusalem had very specific garments. The Western dress code has changed over the past 500 plus years. The mechanization of the textile industry made many varieties of cloth widely available at affordable prices. And the availability of synthetic fabrics has changed the definition of what is stylish. In the latter half of the 20th century, blue jeans became very popular and are now worn to events that normally demand formal attire. Active wear has also become a large and growing market. In the Western dress code, jeans are worn by both men and women. There are several unique styles of jeans found that include high rise jeans, mid rise jeans low-rise jeans, boot-cut jeans, straight jeans, crop jeans, skinny jeans, cuffed jeans, boyfriend jeans, and capri jeans. The licensing of designer names was pioneered by designers in the 1960s and has been a common practice within the fashion industry from about the 1970s. 
Among the more popular include Marc Jacobs and Gucci.